want to give you perspective on Spain. We called up our John Frey, our Simon Kennedy, and said, who is the go-to guy? His name is Luis Garacano. He's one of the, the world's leaders in organizational economics at the London School of Economics. And we're thrilled to have him on. Professor, good noon to you. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to have nice to you. You studied in Spain, you studied in Belgium, and then you went to Chicago, and you had to deal with American idiots that know nothing about Spain. What do we in America need to know about modern Spain that we don't see day after day in the media? Um, maybe the main thing would be that the media maybe presents a picture which is always one of extremes, like of every country you get the little, the little drop. Uh, it's a country that is pretty stable for the most part. Uh, two main parties, both the left-wing Socialist Party and the right-wing Popular Party, are for the most part reform-minded and very committed to, uh, to, to getting Spain through these issues. And there's a big solid middle class that understands that we are in a global economy and that the country has to pull together and, and get through the problems. The relationship of the people to their government, we've all uh, heard the jokes and the serious comments about the relationship of the Greece people to their government. What is that relationship, particularly after we saw those elections this past weekend? Um, the elections, if anything, show that the people are aware that, that that the, the changes that need to be made are in the direction of a, of a market economy even more. Um, it's not an election where populist positions won. It's not an election where people who were claiming globalization is a problem, let's stop it and get out of this train, won. Instead, it was, it was the people who won were the people who, who, who if anything, suggested that, that, that the adjustments have to be made, that the deficits have to be cut. So um, I think the relation of the people with the government is, is one of, 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 of seriousness and commitment to, 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 to reforms. That's the impression I have. Of course, seeing those people in the Puerta del Sol might, might raise some right. doubts in some of our audience. Uh, uh, professor, let's bring up a chart here of Spain's residential mortgages. Talk about a flat line. Look at that beautiful curve. It's a gorgeous curve, Professor. I wax logarithmic here. Up it goes, and then it just goes flat, flat, flat from 2008. You wrote uh, a chapter in a book did the good cars extend bad loans? Are those loans visible? Can we see the bad debt of Spain? So the problem is that indeed um, the, 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 the residential mortgages were, were very, very low. Uh, banks were not leveraged at all for many years, loan to deposit ratios below 100 for, for, for 30 years. Suddenly debt exploded in the 2000s and it has plateaued at 60% of GDP, though 600 billion is 60% of GDP, uh, uh, which is pretty, which is quite a lot when you add up another 400 billion of loans on the other side of the market, developers and real estate develop, developers and construction companies, you get basically 100% of GDP. A lot of it, as, as you're pointing out, was due to Cajas, which are essentially like the Dance Banking in Germany, um, region-owned, politician-owned or politician-directed banks that directed credit to all sorts of uh, pet projects and not in a very consistent manner. Um, there is more transparency right now in right. the regulatory environment, but I don't know that we really get to see what's happening to those loans. As you very well pointed out, it has flatlined. It's not dropping. It's not like the loans are being declared either irrecoverable or being returned. Same thing happens with developer loans. There's 320 billion uh, developer loans, which real estate developer loans, which right. haven't been dropping. They have been refinanced. Look at this. So chart. there are there are grounds for concern in right. those figures. Let's look at unemployment in Spain, folks. We all know it's near 20 percent, but boy, has it surged off of where it's been going back 30 years. Spain's unemployment. What a grim picture uh, that is you're a world leader in organizational economics what organizational solution is there for Spain to generate jobs and to generate the investment that leads to those jobs I mean the, the kind of work I've been doing lately on Spain and, and, uh, and partly some studies with McKinsey I mean what, what happens in Spain is very micro I mean there's there's a lot of jobs that don't get created by all these firms that don't grow and when you look at what those firms are doing, essentially they're 
succumbing under the weight of regulations, uh, extremely hard to fire workers once you hire them, uh, extremely hard to grow, extremely hard to create businesses. There is a lot of microeconomic problems in there and, and it just comes down to uh, firms that don't grow as they should. For the same size, this is an interesting fact, for the same size, firms, small firms in Spain are as productive right. as small firms in Germany. Big firms in Spain are as productive as big firms in Germany. The difference is well, that Spain has way, way more small firms. We're going to leave and it there. The Professor, we're going to have to leave it there. I'm so sorry for that, sir. We'll have you on again. Luis Garancano of the London School of Economics.